You're listening to Fighting Game Volley. It's the number one podcast for low-level player opinions. Yeah, that makes sense. Round one. Hello, hello, hello to all my masters, grapplers, and set play psychopaths, to the Wi Fi Warriors, O Tours, tournament organizers, developers, and content creators, everyone else in the spectrum of the FTC. What's going on? It's your boy Griefer Games, he's Skyward Games, PNG, whatever I'm going by in this week's tournament run, and welcome back to another episode of the Fighting Game Follies, episode 16, if I'm not mistaken, 16, 17, around that benchmark, around that scope. I don't remember, I'll probably check it later on. If it, uh, I'm just gonna like say episode 16 for right now, and then if it's not, then we get two episode 16 scenes but oh well uh anyway what's up what, what, what's happening i was away for a week because internet problems just decided to rear its ugly head i got hit with a very whack mix up uh could not block that mix up and i had to postpone for a week but honestly it seems more like a blessing in disguise because throughout this week we actually got a tiny bit of um more tech and news actually harada just came in was like hey i'm gonna drop like some not big big stuff but like still drop some news which like it, it's always really nice especially since it's it or that was supposed to be my tech and week to actually talk about all the stuff so that's good but yeah, tech and news, baby. We got some more tech and news. We're going to be talking about even more of the tech and news. I feel like I'm sort of slowly starting to, like, understand it and everything. I've been watching a lot of, like, tech and lore videos and everything, sort of trying to understand the culture, the history behind it all, and, like, just, like, get my, you know, I, I'm, I think I might slowly be starting to get my, like, foothold into it, and I might start understanding like what's actually happening in Tekken. I'm probably not gonna be able to play the games anytime soon, but like you know, I'm actually I'm still I'm slowly starting to learn. I'm starting to learn some stuff. But yeah, with all that out the way, please sit back, relax, uh, do whatever you're doing. If you're on the road, safe travels. If you're studying, uh, good luck studying. I don't know. Uh, this is probably gonna be like a like a, a tiny bit of a more shorter episode. I don't know. It depends. Um, but yeah, let, let's just like get straight into it and by getting straight into it I mean, let's actually talk about all of the old character like announcements and everything that I've forgotten to actually talk about because We have a decent amount of characters to actually talk about some a tiny bit more than others that I'm probably going to like You know skimp over for right now But in terms of just you know the characters that like themselves that actually got announced We have Lars, Jack 8, Ling, Leroy, June, and Asuka uh, three of those that I'm actually, like, really, really excited for, uh, like, just more in terms of, like, their lore aspects and everything, rather, uh, but, like, still, nonetheless, it's really good to see all of these characters, like, returning, because all these are all returning characters, some more, like, um, series staples than others, like, for example, Lars and, uh, Asuka, but there, there are some that like just sort of came out of left field, and I guess since I'm alluding to her, I might as well like talk about her now. June, June has been like out. She's been out of like a Tekken game since I think like Tekken like five or six, which is like uh insane that they sort of just like came back and was like, hey, why don't we just drop her again? Um, so yeah, that's actually kind of sick. If um, let me actually do 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 because I'm not so sure if i have like the entire scope like down um but yeah june just just know that june was very much like not in a tekken game she obviously she was like alluded to and whatnot but like she was like not in a tekken game for like a good while i think like since tekken maybe like four or three if i'm not like list if all of my timeline stuff lines up correctly she was not in a tekken game since like tekken 3 which is like a long time ago that's around the time that like Jin, like that's when Jin was like the protagonist of the series and like got his start into his protagonist role as the series like protag now since like you know kazi and everything doing all that but still very cool to see her very cool to see that she's back and like not dead uh uh, she's supposed to, for those who don't know, you know, June Kazuma, she's the wife of, um, Kazuya Mishima, and essentially is just, like, she's supposed to be, like, the I can fix him to, um, Kazuya's, like, you know, double gene born style, like, stuff that's happening. Uh, I don't think she can fix him, but oh well. But maybe she can because she has, apparently in this entry, she has, like, angel powers or something, which, like, looking back over it, I don't know if that was in any of her older stuff, but...
Oh well, we're like we have it now, I guess. Um, if it's if it wasn't the older things, then like uh, I apologize for like being stupid and not remembering this or like not having all of this stuff up like right now. Now I do have the like trailers and everything, and I'm like playing them out in the background to like sort of like refresh memories or not refresh memories, but like just like remember things and like just go over and look through it. But so far, June seems like she has a different like I guess. To, bell and whistle for her game plan in this uh so yeah that's most definitely going to be interesting to see uh some other characters that i wanted to note leroy i i'm not really a fan of leroy's gameplay per se and like the tiny bits of gameplay that i have actually played of him but i'm kind of i'm glad that he's here L leroy seemed cool um when he dropped in tekken 7 and i think i actually was like the character that one like i got into i didn't get into tekken because of him but like i sort of started paying more attention to tekken because of leroy i don't know what his whole deal is i i think he might be like a more like famous practitioner or something especially since he has a bunch of um like stuff up in like times square like he literally has a statue with him and his dog so yeah <laughs> and he's also literally called the grandmaster of drip you have to respect him for that bro like come on Give respect to my boy Leroy. But nah, he seems cool. Um I sort of can't really tell what his whole like game is, but we'll probably or I'll probably like understand it more once he actually drops and you know, hopefully we get a like really good tutorial mode in Tekken 8 to you know, give like tutorialize these things and like tell us like uh, characters and whatnot, but I don't know. Um, one thing to actually note about Leroy, however, is sort of like what's been pushing for like a lot of, or for like certain characters in Tekken 8, he has his, I think this is a cane or staff or something that's like a part of his moveset. This looks sort of like a bow staff if I'm not mistaken, but this is actually really like, is this his cane? Yeah, this is his cane. It's very long for some reason, but he has his cane which is like baked into his moveset which like we've been discussing before a lot of characters are getting like sort of weapons and stuff baked into their movesets i don't necessarily know how this is going to be balanced per se but just the fact that it is here is sort of interesting because like everyone else he did not have something like this in tekken 7 i'm like 85 percent sure of that like he didn't have like a giant king swinging move like this in tekken 7 uh, I, I'm honestly kind of wondering what other characters are going to get, like, a sort of, like, weapon thing like this, if it's just going to be the characters that explicitly do have something that's, like, tied into it, or have explicitly been shown to use something like this in the, like, story modes and everything, I'm not sure. I don't really know what Harada's whole, like, deal is, or, like, what his thought process is going for in terms of, like, designing these character movesets and everything, but... The fact that it is here, it already, like, is sort of showing as a staple to be more of, like, this, alright, yeah, cool, Tekken 8's going to be doing a tiny bit more of an experimentative thing in terms of its movesets and doing things like adding, like, longer reach buttons and everything and, like, just, like, making the movesets and everything a tiny bit more different and diverse from, uh, like, their Tekken 7, 6, 5 counterparts. So, yeah, that's cool. Leroy's cool. I'm, I'm sort of lock rocking with Leroy. Uh, I think he's a really cool chap. I think he's a really cool fella. He is most definitely the master of drip. And everyone should, like, most definitely put respect on his name. Uh, Jack 8, I don't really care about. It's Jack 8. Um, it's like a mass-produced robot. Don't really care about. Um, Ling Zhao, also don't really care about. I know for a fact... I think Corey Gaming actually plays Ling in Tekken 7. I'm not sure. I, I feel like he does. Because I remember something like that being in one of his videos. So... Yeah, props to um, Ling for being in the game. No one was really surprised of that, though. Um, who else, actually? Ooh, Asuka, Tomboy. Um, everyone's, like, favorite, like, sort of Tomboy, like, staple character. She's in three games in a row. Five, or, um, was she in sex? I'm not sure. I might be, honestly, just speaking out of my ass with this one, but uh whatever she's back she's here for another entry she's here again for the game she looks like daffy duck i don't understand what this whole like fit is this is not not the sauce that like i was expecting for her um but oh well she's in uh her whole stick i think if i'm not mistaken i think she's a uh like relative of the kazama line so 
Yeesh. Uh, that's a lot of stuff there to, like, unpack. Um, so, yeah. Cool. More, like, more Kazama family line lineage and everything. Um, from what it seems, it seems like she has some sort of, like, power-up cancel thing that she does. Because she, like, when she does a certain move, or not a certain move, it might just be, like, a commanded but or something. I don't know. But when she does certain things, she goes into, like, a point stand, sort of, I guess, like, Phoenix Wright. Which is like very interesting, and I don't know any like I'm like I said I'm like I'm only starting to get the baseline understandings in terms of like lore and everything for the Tekken cast, so like I'm not really like a hundred percent in depth for like oh I don't know her like whole motivations and whatever, but I don't know this, this sort of seems interesting. It seems like gets another cancel on top of like you know the cancel of the like. I forget what it's called, but the drive mechanic thing that this game has, which is, like, really interesting. She has a dive kick, just like Jin, which is also pretty cool. Maybe she might, like, take a tiny bit more inspiration from, like, his moveset. But I'm not sure. We'll sort of just have to see more and then hopefully, like, actually get a lot of stuff when we potentially get a alpha, beta, something? Like, please don't have it be closed, like, two of Street Fighter, like, sixes, because that... Eh, not fun but Asuka she's cool she seems interesting honestly she seems like a relatively simple like a more simpler character I might play her um same with Lars Lars is also like a character I want to check out because he's sort of like a bastard Mishima child which is like very cool or if I'm not mistaken he it's either I think I might be mixing him up with someone else it's either he's like Mishima or um Heihachi is like alleged child or he's like heir or not heir but uh was adopted after like Kazuya's whole thing I don't remember I like I'm not I don't really have Tekken 8 notes and everything another dive kick he's if you have a dive kick you're cool you're very much cool in my book um also a lot of th I saw like some stuff like people were talking about with Lars and him being in Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2. I don't know if this is a joke or not. I I feel like this has to be like a Naruto Storm joke that I'm like not getting. But um I don't think this is this can't be the same Lars, is it? Oh no, this is the same Lars. Okay. Um yeah, he apparently he made an appearance in Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2. I have no idea as to why, but he made an appearance in this. That's very much interesting. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, people were saying that, like, his Ultimate Jutsu or something was very similar to, like, the one that he has in, like, Tekken 8. Which, that's kind of wild, I guess. Like, I'm, I'm just sort of surprised that this was, like, actually not, um, a joke or something. I'm just surprised that, like, this is real. Because why is he in Naruto? This is so interesting. As uh, I'm just interested as to how they, like, pulled the strings for this. Like, I know... Has, I know Harada is, like, uh, um, what do you call it? He's, like, he's a dude that likes to make hype stuff, but, like... I don't understand what his idea was for this, but go off, I guess. So, yeah, Lars, he's not only in Naruto, but he's also coming back for Tekken 8. So, yeah, um, be on the lookout for that. I'm actually kind of excited. I'm not excited, per se, because I still don't really have, like, a baseline for, like, any characters that I want to play outside of, I guess, like, Jin. Um, and, like, hopefully, hopefully, Lucky Chloe, maybe she gets base roster? I don't know, man. Uh, we might talk about that in a tiny bit. Who knows? But, uh, Lars, game, June game, Leroy, and Asuka. Those are the characters that I'm, like, really looking forward to and the ones that I'm, like, really going to, like, be, like, sticking my nose out for and, like, seeing if anything, like, in particular and particular actually happens with them. Once again, we won't actually know until we potentially get something like a beta to, like, really offset us, like, n like or give us more knowledge on things. But, yeah, we have all of those characters to look after, or we have all of those characters to look out for 
uh so i'm really excited for that we got even more characters i sort of want to get a screenshot or like a like an image or something of just like what the character select screen is actually going to look like i would really enjoy that uh mostly because i just want to see like what uh tekken 8's whole aesthetic is going to be in terms of like colors and like ui design and whatnot we'll probably get that soon uh i have no doubt that like maybe in like some another like big tournament or something that comes up or maybe it might be as like I'm not gonna say far, but like maybe it might be something around like Evo time because that seems like the best spot to like do some sort of announcement as it always is. So we might maybe get something like close to that where like there might even be a booth that like actually plays it. Who knows? But we have all of that to look forward to. So if you're a Tekken fan, all of these characters are dropping. If you are going to play any of these characters, then by all means, more power to you. I just really want Lucky Chloe, and if I don't get Lucky Chloe or like some sort of crossover character that i'm really hyped for or something i'm probably just gonna play Jin, but i i, I just want to play lucky chloe i want to play lucky chloe and then if not her Jin. if not Jin, uh i don't even know who else i i just know that it's probably going to be those two and then if not those two then i might not even play the game who knows round two all right so after getting through that entire like character trailer stuff and everything and now we actually get to talk about the stuff that dropped recently or recently i mean a couple of days ago because harada in whatever like spew that you wanted to call it whatever like crazy crazy uncle harada has i guess sort of blessed us with more Tekken 8 knowledge he just like sort of i don't even know what happened but like dude just sort of went on twitter started quote retweeting and like just answering a bunch of questions that people had uh, it, it was kind of wild, like, just seeing all of this, like, sort of unfold. Um, so, just, just looking through this, it's kind of funny, because, like, you, you can most definitely tell that these are questions that, like, he's saying from, like, his own point of view, and, like, it's not, like, scripted PR stuff. Like, he even says, um, hold up, because there is one tweet here where he's, like, oh, yeah, right here. Uh, he, he, you know, his, his very good catchphrase, so shut up and sit the hell down. Uh, you know, all, all Tekken fans, like, love that one. But, um, honestly, some of this stuff is just sort of kind of insane how dude just, like, was like, hey, I'm gonna drop a bunch of news on Twitter, and then he did, and we just got blessed with a bunch of this stuff on the 8th. We got a lot of news on his whole, like, I guess ideas and like development and everything and whatnot so i guess we should just like start talking and going through like what his overall like scope and everything is and like just like all of the questions and stuff that was asked so first off um there's one here like this is the first quote retweet that i can like see and the first one here it's basically someone asking um or, or like it's someone essentially being like hypothetical but let's say harada asks you to design a character what would be your dream like rendition of that character and then he actually responds in fact this has already happened several times i asked an overseas university student who came to japan to study abroad to supervise a character also although i haven't announced this yet i ordered a default costume design from an overseas artist i happened to find on sns so just overall his um his, his old thought process i guess and like sort of integrating the overseas community in like the game's development and everything now that's really sick i'm really enjoying i think that's really cool i feel like more developers should like not necessarily do stuff like this because you can get some really weird cats who like can really mess with the vision but like honestly something like this is really sick i think this is a really cool idea and i feel like this sort of like bridges the gaps between like the communities which i think is very much like a really cool idea and I, I, I really do want to see more um game developers do some stuff like this but then again Harada's is not he's not weird but like he's very much like if i want to do something i'll do it uh so i'm i sort of don't or i'm not sort of surprised that he would do something like this he is very much a headstrong if i want to do it i will go and do it type of person so like him asking an overseas like university student to like oversee like character development or something it's not necessarily out of his ballpark it's just the fact of like admitting to it is very interesting and i really do wonder if other um like big time like game developers are going to do more stuff like this 
especially since we already have been getting like you know community feedback and things like just balance changes and everything which is like i guess sort of like the patient zero of what this is but you know i i digress we'll we can talk more about this later depending on if he decides to just bless us again with even more news who knows uh next up uh where is it yep crossplay uh big very big question a lot of people are asking for uh, crossplay especially since games nowadays are either launching just straight out the gate with crossplay or are like getting crossplay like around the same time of their launch period uh we're not going to talk about arena ultimax because that was a flop and ultimately killed the game um still very sad about that but big question crossplay is it coin uh, like is it coming is it like happening what's the deal with crossplay and harada responds crossplay of course i will by the way when the previous generation of consoles were released i had already proposed crossplay between the two platforms he's talking about second seven here however at the time they were at odds with each other over their mutual interests and p2p security issues repeatedly refused so Mutual interest, we can sort of, you know, read what the elephant in the room is. They're talking about money, It's and it's specifically Sony that's, like, trying to get their whole cut and, like, getting into it. But just the fact that, like, crossplay is, like, sort of a confirmed thing. Crossplay, and as he talks about in a... another tweet, where is it? Rollback. Um, as he talks about it in his, like, you know, rollback and crossplay tweets, like, it very much just, thing, things like these should, like, drop on the start of a game's lifespan, and we're, so, like, slowly starting to see how good it is in terms of, like, preserving the game and getting the entire community together. Gear just recently dropped with its, like, crossplay for Xbox, however, like, Gear's been going through a very rough spot as of recent, and they are trying to fix that. Street Fighter 6 and natively is dropping with crossplay and rollback. Um, Fortnite, Apex, like, a lot of big games are, like, now sort of understanding that crossplay is very much something that needs to come at the start of your game, or at the very least, it needs to be put into the game like as soon as you can or as soon as you have the chance to implement crossplay because ultimately that just keeps the community to be together you open up more pools for everything else and then just like it's it's just a good thing same with rollback here um already installed it and i already know what you want the reason why we don't make big announcements like crossplay is because even if we make them big announcements people like you will only say things like wow that's normal in this day and age uh, so shut up and sit the hell down. Very much Harada like. Um, I am sort of agreeing with him on this one though. Like, things like this, like things like rollback crossplay and like other stuff like that, it is very much starting to become normalized in this day and age. Like, which is kind of insane because like coming from an era of like fighting games where it was like, oh, delay based was the only thing that we got and like that was it. It's sort of like insane. And it sort of also just like goes to make you wonder what is the overall like end or not end goal per se, but like how far can we take this rollback and crossplay like boat, I guess. Like for example, because Smash is I think one of the only like few games that still runs on a delay based system, if I'm not mistaken. But like, is Smash going to get obviously not crossplay, but like is like the next smash game potentially going to get something like akin to rollback because that would be i i think that would be something insane if smash for to do like a more traditional like move and like get something like rollback i think that would be absolutely crazy but yeah i do understand where he's coming from rollback crossplay things like that there are they aren't necessarily like the hugest of announcements possible and it's not like Obviously, it's not something that you go and announce at, like, a super big tournament or, like, anything else. But, oh, well, I can sort of understand where he's coming from with this one. Uh, so, yeah. And then he also goes to say, oh, if someone asks me the same question about what I answered already today, please write their account name in the death note. <laughs> um, Matt Harada, he's just, that, that's a, that is a cookie. That is very much a cookie, a very interesting flavored cookie. But yeah, there are a lot more um, tweets and everything that I am going to like talk about relatively shortly. But just off of the notion of like you know cross or crossplay and rollback being like sort of things that they are going to be doing from the start, I'm actually really like happy about because 
other games that like sort of were initially delay based and then they started like moving towards um rollback so for example street fighter 5 and tekken 7 their rollbacks were not that good they weren't really the best uh tekken 7s especially because a lot of people were talking about how bad that game's netcode is but let's hope that they learn from their mistakes they learn from the people who have been like implementing rollbacks like in a very well way like for example skull girls skull, i like n almost never have issues with skull girls gear had amazing rollback at the like start its netcode was amazing and then it just sort of like flopped uh which i really don't understand how but oh well um game, games in this day and age they're getting really good rollback they're like we're, we're slowly like getting away from that delay based era where if you don't get delay based then your name your game's most likely going to like die on release or something which um like i said persona 4 arena ultimax and uh heritage or not heritage for the future but all-star battle it didn't necessarily die on arrival but like it did not get the um player base that it deserves because that game is like actually a really solid game but they were just so head fast and like oh we're gonna stick with delay base so no rollback and then boop so yeah i barely see people talk about it unless they're a fan of the game but i digress um just really good announcements from harada here um other stuff that I, like i guess we can talk about now round three so I guess the next and the final point that we should actually talk about is, or it should be like the two other bigger things that Harada just decided to drop, you know, slightly throwing some shots at um, Street Fighter and just like Street Fighter 6 in general, because someone asked, how many characters should we expect for Tekken 8 at launch? And Harada, Harada's response is, I think a, it's a lot more than Capcom san obviously referring to Street Fighter 6, which currently has 18 characters at launch, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think Street Fighter 5 only had 16 characters at launch, and Tekken 8, or Tekken 7 had like, I think 36. So, yeah. Um, of course, character modeling, rigging, and costumes designs are all new assets, so it's hard work. That's why we're trying to increase the number of launches. So, Harada just straight, like, throwing shots at Street Fighter Six's like, smaller roster sizes, which is partly understandable, because, how, like, or, Capcom, ah, whoa, Tekken has a lot of characters to pull from in lore just over all of like the games and everything they have a lot of stuff to pull from from characters some that are a lot more i guess clony than like or like clone like than others if i'm not mistaken uh isn't there literally just a doll that like plays whatever if i'm if i'm not mistaken i think like the original double Jin, he just used to be like an old rendition of Jin's playstyle, and then like there's the regular Jin, which was like the newer rendition of his playstyle. Um, I know not Jin Pachi, but um, I know that the Monoku, not the Monoku, no, whatever the like wooden doll was, um, he was like just a sort of like joke character similar to like 12 or 11 from Street Fighter like 3 or like. Uh, more like 11 from street fighter 5 and i'm trying to think there's someone i think it might be the panda and the bear uh i'm not sure but there are a lot of characters who play like very similar to each other or like there are a lot of characters who you know are just straight like clones of each other so it is very much easier to pump out characters for tekken especially since like they can just use similar like I guess similar assets and everything and they don't really have to do like all too much work as opposed to like how a 2d game would work and like how more difficult it is to get characters and everything like that however like Karada says um character modeling rigging and costume designs are all new assets so it's very hard work um which is also sort of referring to an older thing that he said like in the past like around the time when Tekken 8 like first got announced which was the fact that like they're going to be taking on a lot of newer stuff on this project as well and won't be reusing any assets so that sort of like sp not necessarily speaks cadence to my point but still that is something to you know keep in mind so you yeah, yeah. A lot more characters than Capcom. Uh, we don't necessarily know what like scope of a number that's going to be put on. Um, currently, we know right now that like Street Fighter 6 has 18 base character, like base roster characters, 
with it or with them potentially adding an extra four um for like whenever those four drop we might get like day one dlc who knows probably not because that wouldn't really make sense in terms of a business model because then why not just add them in the base roster but we like either way there's going to be like a solid like 20 ish characters for street fighter 6 and then with harada saying that there's going to be a lot more than 20 for tekken 8 like it's sort of already speaking volumes to it or like it's sort of like sort of speaking to how large this game's like roster can like truly be because we already saw with like tekken 7 how there were so many like just random breakout stars but like just not only both in the dlc but also in the base roster as well because like i don't know if you guys remember but akuma you know street fighters akuma was just randomly brought into the base roster for tekken 7 because he was like oh I was tasked by your wife to kill you a long time ago, and I just didn't feel like it. So, yeah, that that sort of, uh, he just sort of decided to show his head and, like, do his whole thing, whatever. But, I I don't know. Depending on how Harada might want to take this, he might potentially do, like, another 36. He might do 45. We really don't know. We do know, however, that, like, Tekken 7 did start with 36 and then ended off with 51. So, just ballparking it a tiny bit, uh, we're probably not going to get, like, I, I want to say, like, we might get 40 characters. 40 to 50-ish. I don't know. Because, looking at... All of the characters that we got for Street Fighter 5, um, it's 16, and then we also have, I think it was either 5 or 6 for each season, right? Yeah, um, we get 6 for each season on top of the 16 for the base. Um, my horrible math skills are about to show, give me a second here. That's, I think, only, like, 46 characters, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not going to check my math. If that's wrong, then whatever. That's staying in the video, <laughs> or that's staying in the recording. But, um, 46 characters, like, at the end of Street Fighter V's launch cycle, not horrible, but, like, then again, still being beaten out by Tekken 7's 51 characters at the end of its life cycle, um, so once again, just like, yeah, I, I think Harada might have Capcom beat here. But just the fact that he decided to, like, say this in general is also, like, just kind of wild. Uh, because he's like, hey, I'm just gonna throw out, like, that little shade on top of that. Because I'm Harada, and I can do whatever I want. Literally, if you guys don't know, like, I think there was, like, one, I think it was an Evo event or something, but, like, Harada and someone else like came out and like they had on shirts that were just like don't ask me for shit Because you know the Tekken community just loves asking Harada for stuff. So yeah Another big announcement that I'm also going to cover here whilst we have the time is that someone asked can we get a weekend beta of Tekken 8? I'm itching to play with Lars. I can't get enough of the gameplay and character reveal trailers at Harada Obviously and then Harada responds we are still only doing a closed alpha testing at each event So please wait for the beta um doesn't really say anything about when a beta is going to drop it just like does show for a fact that like a beta will be dropping to the public i'm not gonna say relatively soon maybe around like evo time maybe around like the end of this year who knows we might potentially be getting uh tekken 8 at around like maybe mid next year depending on how quickly the team is working on this stuff but we are, for a fact, going to be, like, getting a beta sometime in the near future, which is pretty, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. I, I might finally be able to, like, eat my words in terms of this whole, like, aggression-only playstyle that Harada and the team has been, like, showing off and everything. So, maybe that beta will come and, like, change my mind in terms of, like, what I actually think about the balance for it, or if I, like, you know, still think that there should have been, like, some sort of defensive option that, like, is also put with like their a rage meter thing i forget what it's called like every time and i just like call it something else but i digress 
that's Harada going crazy on Twitter. That's him like spewing all of his stuff. I would link um tweets, but like it's a lot of stuff. So yeah, I, I know that uh if I'm not mistaken, Rofelmonger well actually yeah, Rofelmonger does have a video up talking about that. Uh that was supposed to be or I am supposed to watch that, but I'll do it later. Um, just overall, Harada is obviously throwing shots at Capcom. I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but oh well, I'm not even that big of a Capcom fan to begin with, so I'm not going to try and, like, sit here and defend him or defend them. I'm more interested in seeing if he's going to live up to his word in terms of everything that he's, like, saying here with being, with there being, like, good rollback, good crossplay, and just, like, everything of the sorts. Uh, Tekken 8, honestly, it's, like... I wasn't necessarily on the fence about it per se, but like with all of the way that Harada was talking though, I'm I'm starting to get a tiny bit more interested. I'm starting to pique my interest a tiny bit more. I might honestly like, I'm not going to say it's a day one launch or it's a like day one buy. I might maybe buy this like month of release. Who knows? Uh, until then, Harada, you gotta do a tiny bit more to try and get me to be a day one buy, like, for the special edition stuff, because I already pre-ordered the, like, I pre-ordered the $100, like, version of Street Fighter VI, so, yeah, that, that's my wallet, but I digress, and I guess that's sort of, like, all the time that we have for this episode of the Fighting Game Follies, uh, Thank you all so much for tuning in and, like, listening to me ramble on about, like, this crazy uncle and, like, his unrestricted access to the internet and, like, just social media in general. Um, be sure to follow the socials, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everything else. I have a Twitter where I do mildly funny tweets and then I also do my opinions on fighting game stuff. Um... Delilah dropped for, I know I said this last week, but like, Delilah dropped for Guilty Gear, and I'm sort of on the fence if I want to cover her theme for the next Daisuke Dissect, or if I want to do, like, someone else. I kind of don't want to cover her theme, but at the same time, like, the fact that it took me a whole four months, and I didn't even finish a Sin video is sort of like, yeah, it's sort of an obligation to do that now, but whatever i'll let you guys decide who i do next for the dice dice video so be sure to tune in and check like wait for that because i might drop a poll for it or i might just ask a question and like gauge your opinion on it but yeah that's that's sort of everything that i have to say for all of the technique news that we got as of recent um once again thank you also for tuning in I, I really do appreciate it i love you guys so much for listening to me ramble on about a bunch of stuff that probably isn't going to be mattering anytime soon but until it doesn't then i'm still gonna be here you know talking about it and whatnot um yeah that's it i'm just rambling at this point once again thank you and i will see you all in the next episode of the fighting game follies this has been your host Grief for games peace out be safe and do whatever you gotta do to keep moving forward go out play some fighting games or something <laughs>